Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to discuss with you guys why overhead pressing is probably better for athletes in the bench press. It's a much better overall exercise for them to focus on, and I'm not saying they shouldn't do the bench press, uh, but rather most athletes will have more benefits from doing the overhead press. So let me put on my plus five out of weapons spinning. Work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. And the reason uh, I mention this, it's not because uh, the bench press isn't a fantastic overall upper body size builder. It's that it doesn't put as much focus upon maybe the planes of motion that you might want. It doesn't have the same potential for full body athleticism, and it tends to over develop the chest when the exercise is done properly. Now that's an interesting point because you're going to see a lot of people out there who are like, well the bench press is not that great of a chest builder. And it's really absurd when people say that because you have plenty of, of top experts who study this stuff. Again, I've seen Dr. Mike Israel tell make a compelling argument for that. Keep in mind he is a competitive bodybuilder uh, who is a professor of kinesiology. I've seen him do a fantastic write-up before explaining that the bench press might actually be uh, the best overall chest builder of any exercise. The only reason some people struggle to develop their chest on the bench press is that they're not actually doing the bench press. Now some people are going to say, what? what? What are you talking about? Meaning, if you don't touch your chest on the bench press, you're doing a different exercise. You know, Every exercise has an exact technique and form that makes it that exercise. If you do a variation, you're no longer doing the exercise. You know, a pin lay row, a conventional deadlift, all these things have a specific range of motion. They have a specific technique to them. And if you do something vastly different, you're performing a different exercise. The bench press, you come down and you touch your chest, and then you press it all the way up to lock out. Now, a lot of people skip their chest on it. Uh, or not skip the chest, they skip touching the chest. Now, if you skip touching the chest, you're not performing a bench press, are you? Because if you read any, any description... Uh, by any athletic group, any personal trainer group, anything else, a bench press is the exercise you come down and you touch the chest with the bar and then press it up. But if you're not doing that, you're not performing the bench press, you're performing some other exercise. Uh, and people who do it with their scapula fully apart the entire time, they're engaging their chest a little less and they're cutting down the range of motion so they can lift more weight. But skipping the bottom obviously when you, you think about the biomechanics of it is the only way to de-emphasize the chest on the exercise. Uh, it's also the best way to get injured doing the exercise in the long term and have shoulder issues and, and all sorts of other problems. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, furthermore, you've seen people like Jamie Lewis, and this is going to be interesting. Some people are going to be like, what a world championship level power lifter said this? Jamie Lewis doesn't like the bench press. He focuses mainly on the squat and the deadlift, and it's because he feels that the bench press, and this is going to strike a lot of people as funny, but if you guys know Jamie Lewis and the things he writes about, this is perfectly in line with him, uh, because he does promote hyper-masculinity uh, to a degree to where he's almost comical about it. He doesn't like the bench press because he feels that it makes you into a woman. He thinks the bench press gives people too big a pecs and that that's focused on in bodybuilding, that bodybuilders, because of Joe Weider's uh, gay fetish, that Joe Weider promoted the idea that males need to have disproportionately large pectorals from a functional perspective than the rest of their body. Uh, and part of his reason for that is because he, he believed that Joe Weider was uh, that gay and that he had a breast fetish. Uh, and so therefore he had athletes focus on doing excessive amounts of chest work so that their pecs were disproportionately large. Uh, compared to arms, compared to shoulders, other stuff, compared to their back. And so Jamie Lewis uh, writes about that, and he feels that it's basically gay as fuck. That's Jamie Lewis's perspective, and, you know, he's, of course, an interesting character. Uh, but the part where he is right on is that bodybuilding has changed the classic physique structure, meaning they do put a focus on one of the muscles that they want disproportionately large is the pectorals, to where they're disproportionately large, uh, in comparison to function, meaning that someone who just did a lot of athletic endeavors and a lot of athletic type lifting and functional movements wouldn't have as large a pectorals at the same amount of muscle mass as a lot of bodybuilders focus on because they put extra focus on the chest. Um, and that's an interesting point he has, and he doesn't like the bench press that much. He believes in training the bench press with other exercises, which gets to the other point of the overhead press. What has been observed by many, many powerlifters and powerlifting coaches, I mean, even guys like Louis Simmons and Dave Tate have noted this. 
a lot of top coaches around the world have noticed this, that if a person focuses on the bench press, they may not be that good at the overhead press. But anyone who is extremely strong at the overhead press is still a good bench presser, even if they don't uh, focus on it. And that's the interesting point that has been noted, is that because, because the bench press uh, uses other muscles and you can build the strength of the bench press without focusing exclusively on the chest, that you only need to have the chest big enough to actually bench uh, for your max bench to have a good bench. And you don't necessarily need the chest to be overdeveloped to do that. That if you put a lot of focus on the delts and the triceps, they will facilitate a very powerful bench press. Furthermore, a lot of people don't realize the overhead press is a chest exercise. Again, the way a lot of bodybuilders want to do them with dumbbells and not come all the way down, it's not a chest exercise. But a lot of athletes out there who focus exclusively on the overhead work of different types, a lot of Olympic lifters, if you look at them, they still have good chest development. Why? Because all the overhead work. And people need to understand the stuff with the dumbbells like this, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about overhead pressing where you come down either to your upper chest or your shoulders with a bar and press it up right that's the overhead press with a barbell when you do that or if you do dumbbells correctly which is a different set of grip than what guys are doing way out here it works your, your chest it does work your chest so what we start to find why then would we talk about focusing on the overhead press what does it have to offer well two things the plane of motion is going to be closer to what athletes in the field who need an actual push uh, would do. Same thing with a boxer. I mean, even people would argue, and I've, I've argued this before, that boxers would do better focusing on the incline than the flat bench. Because on the flat bench, done correctly, you're going to come down like this, you're arched a bit. How often does a boxer punch like this? Anyone ever seen a boxer punch in this position? Or are they leaned further in? It is more of an incline angle. Well, the overhead press carries over extremely well to that. It also carries over extremely well to the incline bench. The difference is, of course, when you're doing overhead work, you have the option to do it standing. So, yes, you have a plane of motion that is more natural for hitting someone on a football field or rugby field, a better position as far as the biomechanics go for various types of punches. Punches and pushing people, yes, but there's more to it than that. You also have the ability to stand. If you have the ability to stand, you're able to engage the core, the glutes, everything else a lot more when you're doing your uh, pressing work. By doing that, you turn it into more of a full body exercise. You're able to get the body more involved. Now for athletes, does an athlete ever need to isolate muscles ever need to isolate muscles uh, for performance in their sport or do most athletes try to incorporate their core and entire body into anything they do? Meaning if a boxer punches you, does he only use his shoulders, pecs, and tricep? No. He uses his hips, he uses his core, he uses his glutes. Now obviously an uppercut's totally different, but even a, a normal punch is a jab. A good boxer knows how to use hip drive, leg drive. He knows how to use his lower body to get more speed and power into that punch. He's not isolating just some upper body stuff. It's a full body punch. Even a jab is for a good boxer who knows how to punch or a martial artist who knows how to punch. It's a full body movement. How about when you hit someone out on a football field or a rugby field? There's a lot more glute and core involved in that even than there is chest. That's a full body movement. By doing standing work, you have the ability to train your pressing while engaging other muscles. Then when we get to the push press, the push press is one of the ultimate, ultimate power movements for full body power. Uh, in fact, there's data out there showing that the leg press uh, has as far as speed development, but again, force development. Uh, it's one of the best exercises out there. It's even better than the squat for, for generating speed quickly, for generating force quickly, it's even better than the squat in the legs. The push press uh, is one of the best all around full body exercises ever invented. It has obviously a pressing component to it. Uh, the push press is a full body exercise and it can train you to engage your chest, your shoulders, your triceps while using a leg drive. 
Now, if you think about any sport on earth, can you really compare the bench press to that in terms of hitting someone in any contact sport? Because that's what we're talking about here is contact sports. But anything else to where you're going to do this, you're still utilizing those other muscles. Uh, you're still utilizing stabilizers, so even strict overhead pressing would probably be better for someone just trying to learn to throw a basketball or throw a baseball than a bench press would because of the ability to engage the core for stability more because you're doing it standing. It's better specificity of training. But when it comes to actually hitting someone, things like the push press carry over a lot more. And how are you going to do that with any sort of chest press the way people perform? You're not going to be able to incorporate that element. Uh, and the fact that you can do a push press with a standing overhead press gives a lot more potential for a wide variety of sports applications, but absolutely any sort of contact sport. So when you start to look at it in that context, it makes sense that the ability to stand, not just the angles involved, but the actual ability to stand and do different standing variations is going to allow a lot more sports specific benefits to the overhead press. It's going to create more overall athleticism. You know, just like I would tell people, if you could only pick one press, and I'm not saying you should ever only pick one exercise, not saying that, but if you could only pick one exercise, one type of press to improve almost any type of athlete, and you had to pick between the push press and the bench press, which one would you pick? Which one's going to have the best carryover to, to athleticism? The push press. And it's going to be by a pretty big margin. Uh, combine the fact that you have the ability to add cleans and other stuff to it. Uh, combine the fact that you can do different variations of the overhead press uh, that really add a lot of different performance elements and strengthen the whole shoulder girdle. Uh, it starts to become very, very clear that overhead pressing has a lot more potential um, for different sports applications, particularly when you have the ability to change between barbells and dumbbells. How about clean and press one-handed on dumbbells? There are going to be a lot of sports endeavors, particularly anything throwing related, to be able to train that unilateral work uh, for real power. For real power, I mean, yeah, you can do a one-arm floor press, but you're not going to be able to get the same amount of full body involvement with that unilateral work on each side. I mean, there's a lot you can do with sports-specific uh, training. Uh, with overhead work that you simply can't do with various sorts of chest presses. And what that still comes down to is bodybuilding tends to promote having a larger chest than is necessary in terms of overall development in the upper body as far as performance goes. Um, that may not actually be necessary to be a good athlete. Uh, and so then when you really think about it in those terms, yes, the bench press can put more total meat on your upper body. Absolutely can. But the question becomes, is, is that muscle being added in a proportion that's going to be particularly useful? Is it going to be ideal for what you're trying to do? Uh, probably, probably not. So I think I've made a pretty good case here, and I don't want people to think that I'm saying the bench press isn't a good exercise because it is, but people need to understand the bench press is really... Uh, intended when you when you look at it to be an overall chest builder uh, it's a fantastic chest builder when it comes to carryover to total athleticism the overhead press has a lot more to offer and so even if an athlete wants to do both they're going to get a lot more bang for their buck by focusing a lot more on overhead work than on uh, chest pressing of any type all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time